everybody. Uh, this is my first update video on how my hydroponic gardening adventure is going. I uh, just wanted to make this video just to share with friends and family uh, and post online and see if I can get any tips for how to improve my system here. Uh, but I am not an expert. Uh, I am smart enough to know how to assemble things and follow directions mostly uh, correctly. And this is what got me. Uh, this is what that got me. So. Um, here's what I understand about hydroponic gardening so far. Uh, every plant is different. Every plant prefers a certain amount of light, a certain amount of water, a certain amount of nutrients. Uh, that's, that's what they need to grow. Light, nutrients, water. Um, this is all hydroponic. There's no soil. Um, and oh, and also temperature. So, you know, certain plants grow better in warmer temperatures and cooler temperatures. Uh, and all that stuff. Uh, so uh, this is going to be oversimplified for purposes of brevity. Uh, I'll show you kind of what I've done so far. We just go over the basic plumbing. I've got this reservoir down here that I am... It's basically just a big storage bin from Lowe's. This is a 27 gallon storage bin. I probably don't have that many gallons of water in there, but that's what it's rated for as far as storage. Uh, there is a 800 gallon per minute uh, pump down in there. I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but it's down in there. 800 gallons a minute sounds like a lot. You expect that to be a great big pump, but it's really not uh, that big and it's not that expensive. It's just a little green and black plastic pump. That pumps water with nutrients mixed in up through this PVC. This half inch PVC that goes all the way up to the top branches out in two different directions and then goes out on that quarter inch pipe. Uh, initially I was trying to use a dig brand irrigation pipe for this distribution system up top where you just use a little hole punch and you punch into this rubber flexible tubing uh, and then that branches out into the quarter inch smaller tubes but that was creating a slow leak at just a, every time I would try to do it, it would have a slow leak at, at one or two of the connections. And that's fine if you're doing an outdoor garden, but for an indoor garden, even having slow leaks is not really acceptable. So I had to convert the whole thing to half inch actual schedule 40 PVC uh, and glue everything together. I didn't really want to PVC glue things together but, you know, because, you know, this is my first adventure into hydroponics and uh, I didn't want to commit to gluing things together until I got results on the plants to see how they were doing first, but we couldn't have leaks in the house. So that's what we did. We used, um, I used drinking water safe, PVC glue that said drinking water safe on it. Um, there are other PVC glues that don't say that. Uh, I don't know exactly what the ramifications would be if I had used a different PVC glue that may contain chemicals that are not good for either me or the plants, um, but make sure if you use PVC glue, get the stuff that says drinking water safe. Because, uh, you know, there's like PVC systems for like sewage and stuff where like that might not be important, but if you're doing a hydroponic garden, probably better to use drinking water safe PVC glue. Um, cool, so then the water gets pumped up to the top and it drips into the top of each of these towers. Now the towers are at a slight angle and that's to encourage the water and the nutrients to drip along the front edge of the pipe and against the plant roots, right? And then all that gets collected by this horizontal section which I've also PVC glued together and then returns to the reservoir here. And you probably noticed this bag and you said to yourself, what the heck is that? I'm using that as a filter. This is what they call a nut milk bag uh, where you grind up nuts, I guess. I've never done that before, but you grind up nuts and you put them in this bag and then you squeeze the crap out of them and then you get nut milk. Uh, like almond milk and stuff like that, I guess. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but again, I'm trying to keep it simple for brevity. Uh, so that just keeps particles and whatever out of the reservoir. Now you'll see 
that I do have some debris down there in the water. Uh, some of that is PVC shavings from cutting all this PVC, and some of that is plant debris uh, and other things. But I've also got a bag, uh, a filter bag over the top of the water pump, just in case any of those little particles try to get, you know, so they don't get pumped up through the through the pump and up through the feed and then get, you know, clog the system somewhere. I don't want that, so I've got a filter bag there and a filter bag over the pump, which I don't think is stressing the pump out too much. Um, the nutrients that I'm using are from this company, General Hydroponics, uh, and it's a three-part mix. So a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and that sounds complicated. Oh, we're doing alchemy. We're mixing things and creating potions. Uh, it's not really that complicated. It's basically one teaspoon of this or five milliliters. One teaspoon of this, one teaspoon of this, one teaspoon of this mixed into one gallon of water, and that bada bing, bada boom, that's your, that's your nutrient mix. That is for the general all-purpose uh, blend that they recommend. Uh, you can do other things, uh, one of which I've attempted, which is an aggressive um, an aggressive vegetative growth formula that they that they talk about, um, which is three parts of this, uh, three teaspoons and three and two teaspoons and one teaspoon per gallon of water. Um, I tried that in a Kratky method barrel hydroponic system for a different plant and it didn't seem to work very well, but I probably did something wrong. So, and we'll talk about that later. Um, also, you need to manage the pH of your water and nutrients in your reservoir. And so you've got chemicals to bring the pH up and the pH down. Um, typically, from my understanding, you will find that your pH of your uh, water and nutrients will go either up or down kind of depending on the hydroponic system and the plants that you've chosen and you'll really only need one of these um, but we'll see oh that pump just turned off you hear all that water draining um tools uh, I have a light meter I got this one off of Amazon I found a, a used one for cheaper than normal there you go so you can measure the amount of light that your plant is getting uh so you know again you know certain plants like a certain amount of light so check that before you decide what plant you're getting or whatever um at this leaf of this plant it says 470 right but that's not actually what uh, that, that's lux. Lux is a measurement of light, but if you'll notice, it says uh, times 10 underneath that. So it's actually 4,700 lux at the leaf. Um, so that's how much my strawberry plant is getting at the moment. Now, as these plants, especially the plants that are directly underneath the light, get bigger, they will get closer to the light and they will start to get more and more lux. Um, I think the amount of light I'm giving my plants at the moment is a bit low. Uh, I think I probably would want to get like 10,000 lux at the leaf. But I think the minimum is like 2,000 lux. two or 3,000 lux minimum. So I think I'm doing okay. I mean, I got growth, right? So, uh, also, here's another tool. This is a water tester. This is going to measure... Where's the backlight? Is it this one? It's not that one. Oh. Anyway, this is your water testing meter. Uh, this is... You're going to test your uh, pH level of the water. Uh, it's also going to test the parts per million of how much nutrient that you have in your, um, in your reservoir. Uh, so that's important to have, uh, and that is what that is for. Let's see, have I gone over everything? Um, so I think ideally if I wanted to make a hugely efficient garden, 
especially in an indoor garden, I would pick a plant that uh, enjoyed living in the same temperature I enjoy living in. So, you know, I can cool the house to whatever temperature I like, and that just happens to be the same temperature the plant likes. And then cater the nutrient solution and the amount of water and the amount of light to that one plant. But that's not very fun to have one plant in your garden. We have a variety here. I'll go over the variety here. Uh, we have strawberries. We have sweet pepper plants. We have basil, which is looking a little wilty for some reason. Uh, celebration kale, which is kind of fun. And this was just uh, called lettuce mix when I got it. And then this is Swiss chard, which is also looking a little anemic for some reason, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure why some plants are better than others, but uh, there's, I feel like there's some kind of problem there, oh, but I can't explain it because I'm not an expert and I don't understand everything about hydroponics. Um, cool. Uh, something that I'm going to have to learn about now, now that this is up and running, everything's been going pretty well so far, is, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me go over one more thing. So the lights are on for 16 hours a day. I've got them on this real basic timer here, uh, where it's just set for the lights to run 16 hours a day. They turn on around 5 a.m. and they go for 16 hours. Uh, the water... Uh, pump pumps on for 30 minutes and off and then turns off for 30 minutes uh, for that same 16 hours a day. Uh, I know I saw a um, one of the strawberry hydroponic growers I saw on YouTube recommended the pump turn on for 15 minutes and then off for 45 but uh, they said at least once an hour and the timer that I have at the moment only does 30 minute increments so that's what it is. And so the things I don't understand that I'm going to have to learn about if this garden is going to continue being successful is nutrient management. Uh, I have, again, the reservoir down here, uh, which is really easy to ignore and not think about because everything else is so cool and pretty, right? But um, this is the key to everything and I'm gonna have to figure this out. How much nutrient, like now, it was easy to fill this you know, with water that had the right mix of those uh, nutrient chemicals I pointed to a minute ago. But how do I know when the nutrients are used up? Do, you know, do I just wait till the water level goes all the way down and then just fill it up with the same? I don't, I don't think that's right. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to manage the nutrients in this thing um, and, uh, at, at, and when to clean it. Like, how often do I completely drain it and then, you know, wipe down the inside? And obviously, I don't think I would use soap or anything, but I need to learn that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to figure that out as well. But anyway, that's the garden. Uh, that's how it's going. And thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.